Everyone's been asking me about the Valencia diet. Now, as an anti-diet culture personal trainer, my first instinct with diets with fancy names is an instant gag reflex. Blech. But by popular demand, here's what I like and don't like about the Valencia diet. This is what it looks like. So let's start with the things I like. First, the diet promotes a lot of whole plant-based nutritious foods like fruits, veggies, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Those foods are nutritionally dense and great at keeping you full, which can help prevent you from overeating. I also like the approach to food pairings, a fruit with a protein, three veggies and a carb, a salad and a large fruit. It seems flexible and it respects individual tastes and preferences and gives you the flexibility to choose the foods you like, which is important on any diet. You have to like what you're eating. It also doesn't seem to demonize any foods or food groups like other diets do. Now for the things I don't like. First, it suggests a blanket 1800 calorie target. Yes, it's more than the dreaded 1200, but everyone has different caloric needs and that number doesn't account for your specific height, your weight, your activity level, or anything else. It's just a one size fits all number and that's not how nutrition works. 1800 calories might work for some, but it might leave others really hungry. And what do you do when you get extremely hungry? You overeat, right? The cheat meal here is another concern. Not because you shouldn't indulge every once in a while, you absolutely should. Fun foods are good for your mental health and there's nothing wrong with enjoying them. The issue is that the term cheat meal suggests literally the opposite. It says that the food you're choosing is bad and wrong and that you're doing something you shouldn't be, which plays into the guilt and the shame that drives diet culture. And for those of you trying to lose weight on the Valencia diet, that cheat meal, defined as eat whatever you want, is kind of a recipe for overeating. If I follow the 1800 calories on that plan and then eat an entire pizza because that's my time to cheat, I'm probably not gonna get the results that I'm looking for. I also don't like the idea of having to stick to a really strict calorie goal. There needs to be some flexibility there. Otherwise, it can have a really negative impact on your relationship with food. Ignoring your body's hunger and fullness cues in favor of following a really rigid plan isn't the path to a healthy relationship with food. Another important issue we need to address is accessibility and affordability. This isn't a Valencia diet problem per se. It's really a downfall of all diets, but it's worth noting that fresh produce isn't a viable option for everyone everywhere. Having access to and being able to afford a range of fresh foods is a privilege. We should strive for nutritious foods, but the reality is that it's not an even playing field. Will you lose weight on the Valencia diet? Possibly for some, but remember, true health isn't just about shedding weight. It's also about cultivating a sustainable, positive relationship with food and your body and building habits that you can maintain the rest of your life. So the Valencia diet gets some things right, but stumbles on others. Which diet should I talk about next? 